Welcome back to episode 51. There are now just a couple of little jobs to sort out before the car goes in for its first tune-up. At the moment the fuel pipe is far too close to the exhaust and if that wasn't dangerous enough it's also leaking petrol. And I also need to fit the MED stub stack that I bought. So my first job is to remove the standard airbox. I originally tried a corner filter when the car first ran but it's just too loud for my liking. But it did look good when the bonnet was up. And I tried the standard airbox with the cane and element inside, but although my car does need a tune up, I could just tell that my car is begging for more air. And to be honest, removing the standard airbox on my engine isn't an easy task if you need it off in a hurry. It also hinders tuning up the carb, so off it comes to be swapped for the stub stack. I'm guessing the reason the airbox is a tight fit is that my engine was originally a 1 litre engine. And now it's a 1293 on the original subframe, which means it's sitting further back than it would be than if it was on the newer subframe. I may look at upgrading in the future, just to give myself a bit more room near the bulkhead. When we were rebuilding the car, I didn't have all the required pipe work so we fitted this setup as a temporary measure just to get the car working for Bingley Hall. The problem is, the rubbers are perished and it's sitting too close to the exhaust manifold. The exhaust isn't standard and that seems to create further clearance issues, but the idea that I've come up with to sort it out is just to increase the length of the rubber pieces that I fitted to the metal pipe and hope that it creates a little bit extra room. I'm using a mechanical fuel pump which doesn't help matters either as the fuel pump is right next to the exhaust. Now I'm treating this only as a temporary fix until I can think of a better solution. But extending the rubber portions to give a bit more clearance seems to have worked. There's got to be a better way, I just haven't sussed it out yet, but this will definitely do the job for the time being and it does feel a lot safer like this. So all that's left to do now is fit the MED stub stack. I'd seen these a while back and to be honest they looked alright but I couldn't see an advantage of using one over a corn filter or a standard air box with cane and element. But after reading a bit more into them I thought it might be worth trying one as the theory behind their effectiveness sounded quite convincing. Now if you'd never seen one before I can show you what comes in the kit. You get a CNC machine aluminium stub stack, this one being for the HIF 44. You get a laser cut aluminium base plate. You get the MED branded ITG foam filter and other required fixings to fit it to the carb. On a, a card and a sticker. It looks a nice piece of kit. The bench tested the kits and found the airflow to the carb is improved and this has resulted in performance increases. I think this is due to the combination of the design of the stub stack and the open backed ITG filter. Now although I initially got a little bit confused the kit is relatively easy to fit. Maybe I missed them but I couldn't see any instructions and I had one or two questions about the fitment so I ended up ringing Paul Jeffries again as MED was shut being late in the evening. I was just wondering if there was any gaskets required and it was tricky hooking the filter onto the base plate and I didn't want to break anything. But it seemed it was just a case of using the supplied fittings to bolt the stub stack and the base plate to the back of the carb and hooking the filter over and then securing using the fastener at the top. This is when I ran into a problem as my engine sat too close to the bulkhead and the filter wouldn't go on. It took a little bit of head scratching but luckily I've got an adjustable engine steady so off camera I made the necessary adjustments and I managed to get the filter on properly. So all that was left to do was test it. The car started with ease and already I could tell this was a good swap. I took the car out for a drive to see how it compared to the corn filter and the standard box with K and N. Now the car is in need of a good tune up and that's always the case when swapping filters. 
but already my car was driving so much better, and surprisingly the stub stack wasn't as noisy as I thought it would be. It's obviously louder than the standard box, but it's not as loud as the corn that I had previous. In fact, this was the first time that I'd driven the car and thought this drives really well. I took the car out for about half an hour just around the local area to give it a proper test and I was really pleased with the setup. As I mentioned, it does need setting up properly, but the way it is now, I could actually leave it as it is and I'd be happy with it. I'm not sure why the engine seems to run better with this filter on than the other two, but I'll take the win, and I think I do actually prefer the look of this filter compared to the other two. So the next job is to get the car booked in for its tune-up. I found the local garage, and they sound like they know how to tune air series engines, so I'm hoping that it won't be long before the car is fully operational. A few days after making the video, I happened to be speaking with MED and they passed on some additional information that may be of use if you're fitting one of these filters. The backing plate is made of aluminium. When laser cutting the material it slides back and forth on a machine and can scratch one of the surfaces. Therefore there's usually a good side and a not as good side. The not as good side is usually placed towards the bulkhead, leaving the good side showing. Or alternatively it could be polished to perfection if you're looking to jazz up the engine bay. Obviously this isn't done in house as it will bump up the cost, but it's worth knowing so you can decide which way around you want to fit it. I didn't realise this and I think I placed mine with the not so good side facing the engine bay, but you can hardly tell if I'm honest. I mentioned in my videos about gaskets. I didn't need one on this setup, but apparently on some carbs the lower edge of the float ball can sit closer to the base plate than others. If it's tight, they install a couple of gaskets between the carb and the mouth plate. I believe they're working on a spacer plate as the brand new carbs can be particularly tight as they now come with a CNC machine float ball which can be chunky. But obviously if there's no fitment issue a gasket isn't required. The kit doesn't come with instructions but the included card does have a QR code on which I think is supposed to link to a particular ITG air filters section but when I tried it it said page not found though it did take me to the ITG web page. So maybe there's additional info on there about cleaning and maintenance. I just didn't look for it yet, as I'm hoping it'll be at least another 12 months before I have to start cleaning it. 